There we are. All right. So, okay. Here we are back again. Yeah, go ahead. Let's go ahead and start. Do the recap, folks. What happened last week? Well, uh, we were given a new assignment um, in occupied Czechoslovakia. We're supposed to investigate what's happening in a particular area where um, Germans are um, killing people in a, in a, and performing experiments possibly on them, something like that, some atrocities happening. Section M gave us this assignment and we've um, teleported or portaled through to my distant relative's uh, house. Don't forget about our amazing ambush. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh right, because we ended, we also last session we ended the, um, the previous adventure where we've destroyed, chunkified a slot of, yeah. Also known as Johnny Slick's attempt to introduce a mid-level boss and make a recurring <laughs> bad guy. <laughs> we didn't get a single shot off any of us. <laughs> we just he didn't to just not hit off. anyone. He never... he never had a chance. Like he had to, I had to spend his one turn like trying to get him out of there and then, nope. Didn't work. <laughs> yeah, we pwned. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so we're now in the sunny Czechoslovakia trying to figure out what to do. Sights to see. Fun to have. Sample some of the local Nazis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is, uh, it is, um, it is August, uh, I'm setting this at mid-August, August 15th, thereabouts. So the uh, the Battle of Britain is is happening. Uh, the big blitz hasn't really started yet, though. Okay, and we don't have any Brits, so no no one in our party gives half a shit. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> that's that's what you get for not showing up, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> um, ah, let's look at it. Has, has he said that he can't? Make oh, is he? Yeah, he, he's some, in chat. Something with work. Uh, well, last weekend, uh, one of my coworkers is here before he leaves our office, so I guess he's hanging out with his coworkers or co-workers, however you prefer. There we go. I was just I was taking I was taking all this extra time to. Uh, to look up the weather in Prague because I know I'm I know it's very important. Um, okay, so anyway, so I, I have uh, prepared these uh, the little briefings here. Um, so I don't know. Do we want to pretend like this is reading class and take turns reading this or? I don't I think, think that's a I good think, idea. No, <laughs> no. I, I appreciate think we're all the effort. Kind of capable adults who can okay. read two sheets of paper right i think perhaps for the benefit of our, our viewer um we could we could summarize what's happening in the right briefing. that would be that would be a great idea if you guys have read it then that would be terrific otherwise i can flip through this and i won't read it verbatim either although if i do it'll be in a authentic czech accent that louis will marvel at very authentic <laughs> Who wants to summarize? Okay. Um, well, Czechoslovakia has been annexed by the Nazis. Um, there are some resistance organizations popping up here and there. They are only starting to centralize, get centrally organized. That's still in the very early stages. The area that we're going to, or that we're in now, um, apparently there's a new resistance group called the Three Kings. Um, and this area, in this area, is also located a castle where the Nazis are rumored to be conducting very nasty Mengele-type experiments. And I think that's that about covers it. Oh yeah, there's a contact, a priest, who is in the resistance, and um, it looks like our first course of action is to uh, track him down. All right. Yeah, and or find the you know the resistance guys itself themselves. Um, yeah, I'm just flipping through here really quick. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, 
All right, then I just briefly displayed those in case somebody wants to read that. I don't know why anybody would, but they could. It's possible. Um, all right, so uh, so yeah, so you, uh, I have uh, determined that you guys are going are sitting in um, Carl Steen. I think uh, judging by where you heard the gunfire, I think you're probably right on the other side of the river, like right down there. You can see the little are X. Are you doing something? You should see a little X on the map. Uh, no X. No map. No X. You're not seeing the map at all. I'm, I, I'm only really seeing the map because I'm, I've opened oh. it in the journal. Player's map of casting. And it's like windowed now, but <sighs> I'm not seeing anything up here on there. I don't know if we're sharing what you're seeing. Maybe you, so. Is there like a little page toolbar up at the top? A what bar? There should be like a little, a little. Um, apologies for having to spend time doing this, but um, there should be a little. Um, uh, may or may not be there for you, but there, there may be like a little picture of a little page with a corner turned at the top right-hand corner of your Gold screen. Journal. Is it called journal? No, it's uh it may just be something that I only see as a DM, but Yeah, I, I'm not seeing it. I don't see it. And the only oh, options I Oh, have that's why. I'm oh, there we go. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm an idiot. But we knew that going in. Well, it's working now. That's all that matters. There we go. Okay, so you should see the uh um, you should see the, there's a little, I put a little blue X, uh, down where I think you guys are. All um, right. Just south of, uh, Carlstein. Actually, well, you're so in, this, you're I in the town of Carlstein, but just south of Castle. Where those, Castle. Uh, I'm sorry, where those shots we heard, where they're coming from the north? Let me double check that really quick. Um, double check, huh? Oh, every single time I say the word check, it's a joke. God, I hope we don't run into a check <laughs> called Mark. Um, yeah, that you would have heard uh, them coming from uh, just the other side of the river, right about there. All right, so what are you guys going to do today? So at what time is it? Is it morning? Yeah, it's got to it's gotta be morning now. Um, Artem's ants making you delicious Czech breakfasts of eggs and sausages and... She's not well off. It's probably porridge. Porridge. Sausage porridge. Sausage porridge. <laughs> that, that, that is the name of your sex tape. <laughs> um, that's my oh dear God. That's my Czechoslovakian laugh, by the way. All right. <laughs> Sounds a lot like your all your other laughs. I am Czechoslovakian. And this, this is going up on YouTube, isn't it? I mean, that's just a diplomatic incident waiting to happen. This you country like, doesn't exist anymore. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. It's not like the land's still there or anything. <laughs> and that Czech is still spoken by people in the Czech Republic. Um, in any case, okay, so yeah, so there you are. You got what it is you want to do eventually, you know, find the resistance, try to find that priest. And it is the morning time, yeah, so you're eating your, okay, porridge sounds good. I won't deduct a fate point from Artem for adding to the plot. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so uh, right there you I, are. I think maybe my aunt could could uh, give us some contacts. Um, what can we ask her about? I think we should ask her about this. What's his name? Andre something? Andre the Giant? Uh, sure. The uh, the priest. Um, yeah, she's heard of him. Oh, that's right. Um, 
Oh yeah, he's okay. I, I won't even try doing that anymore. Um, yeah. <laughs> every time, every single time. <laughs> I'll be honest. I'll be honestly like like half of my half of the reason why I do that is is because I just see your face go. It's all right. It's all right. I mean, judging by that coughing that you had just now, it is slowly killing you. As it is slowly killing me. <laughs> um. Let's see. Well, are are you are you talking about poor Father Ravel? Or good. no. Uh, you mentioned Andre, 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 uh, something. I can't Chimney. remember. Right. Yeah, that guy. Damn it! Ah, this written and all laid out here for me too. Um. Oh, there we go. Uh, you know, I, I, oh, on, yeah, I. I'm afraid I don't get out much, so I haven't really heard much about him. I'm sorry. Um, I think he's he was a priest down the road. Our our own man was a was was a, a man um, uh, named Father Pavel, who nope. uh, unfortunately was. She's Jewish. No. Nope. Nope. Oh, that's right. Ah, damn it. Sorry, Rabbi would, Pavel. Would, yes, Rabbi. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I, I all all these all these uh all these these Lutheran priests or whatever what religion do checks Catholics. Are they Catholics, Catholics really? Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. All these all these Catholic people all get mixed up and all together as far as I'm concerned. I have Racist. to we have to we have to stay underground anyway. So uh, Constantine asks her if there's a neighbor that she can really trust who who still gets around. Uh, well, there's... Well, I know that she has a son who's uh, a bit of a lowlife. Right. Kind of, kind of my people kind of guy. Right. That'd be how you uh, know her. Yeah. So maybe we could find him. Is he around? What is he up to? Um, yeah, that is a good question. Go ahead and make a uh, make a contacts roll to see if you can figure out where he is. All right. Ooh, nice. Yeah, that would that would do it. Um, so yeah, I mean, given that this is a small town, or you know, a series of small towns, see the Vorda uh, Trebein and Hinta Trebein are both um, you know separate small towns that are basically one and the same. Um, what would he be doing in this area? Um, probably stealing stuff and then trying to sell it. All right. Um, okay. Yeah. So that sounds like he might be in jail because the Nazis are in full force on this area. Oh, but he's, I mean, I think he would find, uh, he would find a good hiding spot in the woods. He's, uh. He's very resourceful. All right. Yeah, I think you want him to be in jail. He could be in jail, but and I don't think that military occupation necessarily means that all the criminals immediately yeah. get lifted off the street. <laughs> yeah, I well, think he would probably be uh, scarce. He would probably be because of the obviously because of the Nazis and the whole Jewish thing. He'd probably be underground somewhere. But she might know um, how to contact him. All right, yeah, that sounds good. Um, yeah, so let's say that he is... He's hanging out out in Serbst, which is the village that's... You don't actually see it on the map. It's out to the uh, to the west. Yeah. Okay. It's a Does little bit out there. telephone? In Czechoslovakia in 1940? I, I think not. She's poor. I think, I think we can... Yeah. So I think our options are try to do it ourselves or try to get information from somebody who's local and I think probably contacting my cousin Pavel. 
and getting more info from him may be a good idea. All right. Uh, in fact, let me go ahead and mark that down really quick. Uh, so I, I can't really get a sense of scale, but how long would it take for us? We would need some kind of... It doesn't look like it's very far. I mean, the station, yeah, if that's the station, if that's the scale. Yeah, it's only it's only a couple miles away. Okay. Um, the one thing uh, that she does warn you about is that there's not a lot of action going on over there. Um, because uh, a few months ago, the uh, they, some people got lippy with the local... Uh, the the local uh, Nazis and they conducted some really bad reprisals there, so it's not the easiest place to get around. Okay, but we've got run into a checkpoint. Did you say checkpoint? Enough of that, okay. sir. <laughs> we've got some very nice Nazi uniforms. We do. Which we could wear. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so. That's definitely an option that you you need to take the time to do that. But uh, we may want we may want to not like exit Lazar's aunt's house looking like high placed Nazis because that may tarnish her reputation somewhat. <laughs> right. Or draw attention, yeah. Either way we might draw attention. Um So we should probably just head out and find a quiet spot to change into those uniforms. And then continue on. The house probably has a back door we could try to sneak sure. out of. Yeah, she's got you know back doors. There's a small garden back there um, that you know looks on to adjoining houses. Uh, Carlstein proper's got a during the day. You can see that there's you know several shops and various things there. You've got you know quantities of small bills and the like if you need to go into one of the shops. And we had, we were armed, is that correct? Uh, you did bring right arms with you, yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, anything you walk around with, you're probably going to want to conceal, but sure. Yeah. Well, we've, we've got a bunch of Nazi weaponry, as I remember. So if we're wearing those uniforms. Okay. Should be fine. So you're all walking out wearing the backpacks. Um, all right, yeah, so uh, there are... Um, patrols that you know walk around the area. I would assume that you you know you're kind of waiting for patrols to one patrol to leave before you walk out and start doing stuff. Um, I could be like the evil GM and be like, "Well, you didn't say so, so you walk out right in time for patrol." <laughs> uh, so yeah, so you so you walk out there. I mean, again, there's you know it's a uh, it is uh, just a you know s small town. People doing their own thing. Several shops, other houses. You are dressed like civilians at the moment. I presume you're each carrying a backpack that's got your Nazi uniform and all that in it. Yeah. Sure. So let's okay. So I guess we're on our way to Serbst. Okay, so you're still dressed like civilians. Should no, we change it? Yeah, I take it we will find. Um, oh wait, Morbis' mic is really. Yeah, Morbis, sorry. your mic is. Ah, no worries. Um, I, I, I take it we find a secluded spot, like a cop. I'm not sure and, if it's. Uh, I mean, what we want to do is we don't want to draw attention unnecessarily. If as long as we're wearing our civilian gear, I don't necessarily see why we would draw attention to the Nazis. We definitely don't want to spook Pavel. Uh, if we're going to be wearing Nazi uniforms. Okay, so we may want to leave them behind because if we're stopped and searched. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think we should probably leave our gear behind, including our weapons. Okay. Okay. Constantine, no, he still takes his knives, though. All right. Sure. I'll I'll take my knife as well. He uh um and he, he you know goes through some efforts to conceal his knives using his uh, disguise skills. Okay. Um. Yeah, I don't think that would be well. It would, it would be tradecraft, just not with the disguise. But um, sure. Yeah, go ahead and make a tradecraft roll to see how well you conceal your knives. Actually, both of you. Oh. 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 Yikes! Wow, that is okay. 
<laughs> so, I mean, you, you, they're both concealed well enough to where you're not, you know, they're not like sticking out. Um, you know, Louise is forming a, a bit of a bulge in his, in his hip. In his pants. <laughs> Causing Lazar to think to himself, I thought he was the professional spy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so you've got, but you, they are concealed at the moment. All right, fair enough. Are guns too? Well, I think we should probably leave any anything that, if we're stopped and searched, anything that might raise suspicions or, you know, get us into trouble with the Nazis, I think we should probably leave that behind. Right. That being said, you know, personally speaking, if you want to take a gun along, you certainly can. You don't have to tell yeah, them. They're German guns. We've stole them from the Germans, so... Right. Yeah, and but we the have thing any... is, we're kind of posing as uh, Czech civilians at the moment. Oh, okay, then, yeah, leave them behind. <laughs> what are you doing with the Sherman gun? <laughs> it was a gift. <laughs> from, from the Fuhrer. <laughs> <laughs> the last dead guy who dropped it. I was doing some reading on the subject of guns. I, I'm not really a gun guy, and I wanted to know what I might be carrying. And it seems that a lot of guns from World War One would have been held over at this point, and it could have been from either side, at least with the rifles. Yeah, I mean, yeah. depending on what you're carrying. I think Louis, like, specifically said, hey, I want to carry an MP40, So because he was, yeah. like, stens are weak and stupid. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, if you... if you know, you want to say that you're carrying like a. 19, I think Car whatever. 98. Is it Car 98 that was the German standard German rifle, and I think it's from basically 1898. I, I got to look it up I, again. I had it. Car 98K, I think. It oh no! It was it. actually. Adopted in 1935. My bad. I mean, you know, carrying along rifles might be a bit obvious anyway. Yeah, no, I think I think we should try to be inconspicuous, um, probably, what? until until there's a reason. I, I, I did make that tradecraft roll there. Oh, so you're carrying along. What are you carrying along? Trying to carry along, then, or in or indoor conceal rather? Uh, that my my rifle and, and kit and uniform. Did, did, isn't that what we were all doing? Uh, uh, just actually, they're 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 leaving that stuff behind. I think you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. And yeah, yeah they're I just think... unless unless you can unless you can think of it. Basically, the the reasoning that I'm uh, that I'm proposing is that. We're going over to Serbst, which is somewhat a, 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 a ways, and if we run into any sort of Nazi, uh, we don't want to alarm anyone. We don't definitely don't want to alarm our contact who doesn't know we're coming uh, with Nazi uniforms or risk being exposed. So if we stop, we want to pose as civilians and just not cause any trouble. So I, I suggest that we leave everything behind except what we can explain. Right. Okay. Yeah, sure. And it might be really, really hard to conceal a long gun. I'm trying to think of how you'd even do that. It's like... It's, it's one of the... He's got a suitcase gun, you know, like... <laughs> he assembles. <laughs> like, he's, I've got a bad leg. It's stiff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going hunting. <laughs> that might be one of those... Uh, yeah, that... Well, actually, I this would they would confiscate all the weapons right. that they would see. I was about to say that, like, I, this would be one of the things that would have come up in the intelligence uh, report that you guys did. Is that uh, shortly after the Germans took over Czechoslovakia, they they confiscated all the guns. So, if you're a civilian walking around with a gun, just like Obama, <laughs> yeah, that's right, in Texas. <laughs> Oh, by the way, the uh, if you guys if we care at all, I don't know why we would, but it's there's actually two guns from 1898. There's the Gewehr 898, and then there's the um, the Katabiner 98K. Both of them made by Mauser. So, 
depending okay. on what you want. Obviously, one's a carabine, the other one's not. Um, Caribbean. Yes. Uh, Yaman. Yeah, <laughs> all right, so you're so you're dressed up uh, like uh, like civilians walking around. You know, there are. Uh, it is. It's a large enough town to where you can just walk through the place and, you know, people don't automatically say, Hey, you're not from around here. Um, the people generally are pretty, um, uh, you know, pretty like kind of night. Well, not necessarily so open now that the Nazis have taken over, but they're, you know, they're not the sort to like sneer at you all the time or whatever. Um, so you're going out to, Serbst, that's right. Um, so okay, so you get out to Serbst, and it's a small, it's another small village, and you know, maybe a couple hundred people live there. Um, it's it's basically just a couple streets, um, and many of the houses have kind of been burnt down. Uh, many more of them are damaged by fire. Um, there is a patrol of five uh, Wehrmacht uh, guards just kind of lounging around in the center square as you walk up. Did um, did uh, Lazar's aunt tell us where her son is likely to be, or just the place? Um, I'll let you answer that, Lazar. Okay. Um... She probably would give us a house where he he might be hanging out. All right. Uh, Not necessarily his house, but somebody he might know who could tell us where he is. All right. Sounds good. So I'll just uh, here. That's just the street. And there's a couple of cross streets. So I think. my expert drawing skills. Hopefully you can see that I'm drawing a little bit further down the screen next to your characters. Yes. Oh, I see. Okay. Hey, we're packing two Lazars on my screen. Are there two Lazars? Um, okay, well. Yeah, Cousin pa Pavel looks remarkably like me. <laughs> impossible to tell apart. Um, Yeah, so the Nazis, the, the patrol is right there. And I think dude's house is going to be up here. Um, so, yeah, so that, and then you're walking in from the south. Actually, you'd be yes. walking in. Yeah, it's rotated. Yeah, you're walking in from the south. Um, so south is the bottom? Yes. Uh, let's see, and then... I'm looking for, um, oh, that's right. I was going to, sorry, one second, get rid of that and replace him with Constantine. I swear I put Constantine out here initially, but I guess not. There you go. Okay. All right. So what are you doing? You see these guys, they don't necessarily notice you yet. Um, there's another... Let's see. Out in front of them, there is going to be a, another church because then Catholics love their churches with the, uh, the graveyard there behind it. A couple stores on the other end. The pub it's down right next to you. Here. No, they're kind of lounging in the, that center square. They look like they look bored. Oh, that's not good. Well, it seems like a bad idea to just stroll past them. Does it? How many are there? Uh, there's five of them total. One no, guy who's idea. yeah, one guy who's you know dressed who looks like a leader type, and then four other guys. Can we go a block over to the east or west? Uh, there's not really much of a way of town over to the east or west. So there's like forest and that kind of thing. 
uh, farm, actually I should say farmland. Like, so. Even less to hide behind. Right. It's August. So, um, it is, uh, you know, that they haven't, they're about to harvest. So crops are kind of at their tallest. So I guess in that respect, Okay, are there um, any, is there any, like, are there any farms nearby? Like, is there any, anything that looks kind of agricultural on, on the road as well? Before we get to the uh, the crossroad. Like um, a tractor or hay balers? Well, I'm, I'm more like a, like a farming equipment, sickles or whatever. Uh, I mean, there's, you know, it's a, it's a couple, it's, there's only a couple miles in between you and there, but I mean, there's a couple of farms on the way there that, you know, have farmhouses that are equipped with farm equipment. All right. Um, I don't think well, we should all go. I think that I should probably go myself. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, but um, I'm thinking that, you know, as harvest season is coming up, they're bound to um, get a lot more day laborers in who are not necessarily from the town. So if we want to make like we're day laborers, oh. it might be handy if we carry some kind of farming implements. Yeah. I'm right at home. Sure. All right. <laughs> Let us grab our sickles. And so, Lazar, can, can you can you scrounge for for anything that you know? Yeah, let me, let me look around for anything useful. Hint, hint. All right. You go and make your okay. So, oh, that's right. That's a stunt, isn't it? Um, yeah. yeah I mean, so you, there, yeah, you found uh, there's a, a a a farm on the way there. You double back a little bit after you realize that you see that group up there. Uh, there's a farm on the way there that's got a bunch of farm equipment just kind of laying around. Um, you know, the farmhouse does look occupied, but the equipment's there. We could steal it or we could maybe try and buy it. But then again, I don't know. The thing is, the thing that, that we kind of will, we will run into this is that none of us speak Czech, do we? Does Lazar no. speak Czech? No. Yeah, yeah that's a bit... I think the only one of you that, that could would be you. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. yeah. yeah it's that's, close. It's, I think it's, it, cl is it close to German? Or is it a Slavic uh, language? I can't it's remember. a Slavic it's language. It's Slavic, yeah. yeah. I said, I think they say something like Dobre to mean good or whatever that means. Right. Yeah, I mean, for example, the, um, the city of Prague is actually Praha in Czech. Yeah. So conversely, we could also just kind of get out of there for another two three hours maybe they'll move away maybe they'll get bored enough to leave that's another option for sure yeah so yeah the bottom here i think i mentioned this um because we're in europe there these guys are all over the place but yeah the bottom of these is a pub so let's go to the pub until they leave I think that the thing, though, with those soldiers is that if they are going anywhere in a village like that, they are that, quite likely to go to the pub. <laughs> Camp out We're kind of behind the pub until they go by and let them go by. Or if they go in the pub, then we can just go on our merry way. What if we pretend we're drunk and, and, and stumble past them? Yeah, it's, you said it was broad daylight. Like, yeah, it is like nine in the morning at the moment. So <laughs> it'll happen. It could happen. Yeah, but it is especially, Europe, so yeah. Especially with the czar. Well, it is a Slavic country. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, right. So okay, we're going to have to talk about what our story is anyway, because like as we just established, we don't speak Czech, and I can lie, but I, I'll need a lie. We've got, um, Czech, he, we've got Czech identity papers and we don't speak Czech. That's a bit dodgy. <laughs> but we've also got German papers. Yeah, and I mean, then they'd be wandering around, why, wondering why like a bunch of SS people is walking around. But the thing is, Czech. 
they don't speak Czech either. They're not Czech soldiers, German soldiers. Right. In fact, one of the bits of, of information so, that you guys got from the intelligence is that, you know, when the Germans went down there, they basically enforced German, the language on everybody, because it is Germany. I mean, that's what they do. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, they the, the villagers all speak Czech, but like everything, any official business that's conducted is all done in German. And there is there is a sizable I mean there is a sizable German minority in Czechoslovakia. Yeah. Mainly those folks occupy the Sudetenland, which is not where you guys are. You're in Bohemia, which actually is the German half of Czechoslovakia anyway. So yeah, but but yeah, and it's not like those people were confined physically right. to the Sudetenland. Right. So. Well and uh, I mean, yeah, and as far as that goes, I mean Bohemia was, you know, part of the HRE for centuries. And so, yeah, most of the people here are going to be speaking, able to speak German as a second language, but you know, it's a little by little, like going into um, like deep into Wales and speak English. People can understand you, but you can't necessarily expect them to want to understand you. Okay. So, okay. What Constantine's proposal is is that um we have we have like a drink or something in the pub Breakfast. and yeah just so he can get an ear for the local accent so he can you know speak german with a czech accent and what i'm suggesting uh, I, is that i have an even better idea okay but yeah let's go into the pub okay, okay. And what i'm suggesting what I'm, what the plan is is that at some point when when once I've got the accent down a bit, I go out there and I go and I distract the German soldiers and I pretend to be one of these German Czechs coming to thank them for, you know, Liberating. freeing them and bringing them into the wonderful Third Reich. And when they're distracted, distracted you guys may be able to just walk by. I might have a better plan. I assume you guys are discussing this like over... Pub. I, I, yeah, I assume you guys are already in the pub and you're like discussing right. this over drinks. Uh, uh, is there like a, 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 a boy of some sort? Me. That I could give wow. money to to run over to the what? house. What? And <laughs> bring Pavel. Boys now? I mean, it's a it's a pub. I mean, you know, this is Europe, so there may be more hey, bohemian about this than uh, than most places. But no, I don't so think the, there's a lot of children in the pub. Bartender might have a son, or you know, some kind of a helper person. I the sweep the floors type person. I currently, you've got you know the, the bartender. There's a he's got what looks like his wife in there. There's a few customers um, of you know middle-aged folks. Okay. Um, uh, some you know a couple of older women um, working as waitresses. It's I mean well a older woman working as a waitress. It's not somebody's that somebody's got to be sweeping the floor below the age of four, fifteen. Right. Anybody 15 and older is like 15 to 40 or so is probably in the war effort at the moment. But um, Lazar just walks up to the bar and goes, hello, I'm looking for a boy. <laughs> that's 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 what I'm hoping. Um, <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, let's see. So I'm the youngest one there, probably. <laughs> How, how old is I mean, Roderick? You can you can you can institute a, a uh, you can sit, put a boy in there. It'll just cost you a fate point. Yeah, let's do it. Was that. Like okay. Let me do right. that. Yeah, this is like a fourteen-year-old kid who. A joker! You were oh. supposed to take this out of the deck. <laughs> I don't think it matters, sir. Um, but the, yeah, so I mean, there's there's a there's a kid there who's uh yeah he's like. Actually, let's put them at 12, like, because I think, you know, the kids who are even like 14, 15 years old are lying about their age to run off and join the resistance or the army, depending on where they where they are. So I think 12 sounds good. OK. So, so he says something to you in check. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you call him over in German. OK, can you. Maybe he speaks a little bit of German. Maybe you could make... He, he must... 
at least a couple of words he must understand. You know, go over there, Pavel, money. Here's half now, half later. <laughs> Bring Pavel. <laughs> um, yeah, go ahead and make a rapport roll. Rapport. I think, uh, actually, it would be Matthias or Constantine who well, you're trying to persuade think- him. Uh, well, he's he a German have, speaker. Well, you're well, you're you're the one that's. Do you speak German at all? Me? No. Yeah. Okay. So I, mean, I guess it has to be. I, have, yeah. I, I would have Russian, maybe you know, Russian, right. Ukrainian, and English because Matthias right. taught me, or Constantine taught me. Okay, that makes sense. In prison, <laughs> you speak prison English. The only thing he taught you in prison. <laughs> <laughs> you speak jailhouse English. You've got like twelve different words for prison, bitch. <laughs> um, um, okay, so yeah, um, Constantine's not that great at rapport with people, but he's very good at lying. So, <laughs> there's uh, candy in that house. He basically, he basically oh my God. Uh, <laughs> first, first, he, he well, obviously, I mean, the kid. He doesn't speak. Does he not speak German? Is is that it? Is he being willfully ignorant or? Um, he's the only the only bit that you've spoken to him so far is in Czech. So, I mean, he said okay. stuff to you in Czech. You recognize that it's in Czech. You have no idea what it, what it, what he said though. Okay, so I um, Constantine just starts talking to him in German, some some platitude to get at, out of the way, and he kind of looks at the kid to see if, if the kid is being willfully Czech, or... All right, yeah, go ahead and make a rapport roll then. Is that not an empathy roll? No, it would be, I mean, if you're, I'm, I'm interested in what, in like, how, what you're saying comes, uh, comes about, and then I'll determine how he reacts to it. All right. All right, so uh, yeah, um, he he looks. Let's see, what is your empathy? Yeah, I mean, he looks confused. Uh, like, yeah, it's like why? Yeah, so, so yeah. like, really broken German. He's like, why do you no know, speak Czech? Okay, so yeah, um, right. So Constantine calls over the the barkeep. Okay, you're like. He's like, boos, or whatever. <laughs> I think that's what you say to a dog when you're calling them over. It. That might be appropriate. Um, so, yeah, you call him over again in German. He's also confused because, you know, you're dressed like Czech workers. Uh, okay. It's like, what What do you want? You're not Nazi, are you? Okay, no. Uh, Constantine explains that, that we're German, speak- German speakers from uh, Sudetenland. And we have a business meeting with uh, someone in this village, a guy called Pavel. And what we want to do is uh, send your boy over to his house to, to collect him to come here. Because, and Constantine gives him a sly wink, we'd rather not pass by the square right now. All right. Yeah, he's like, Sudetenland Ptui! I, I spit on your Sudetenland. You're the people who got us into the war in the first place. We could have been like Switzerland if it wasn't for you. Okay, um, Constantine money. just Can we do kinda, money? kind of fixes, uh, fixes this barkeep with, with a glare, and he says, you know, if, if this is the way the conversation is, is going, we'll, we'll be here until Three Kings, which is a holiday, just to... Oh, okay. Um, but he kind of emphasizes those last two words. Yeah, oh. until three kings. Um, man, okay, uh, let's see. Sorry, let me... Hmm, um... He's like, oh, I know exactly what you're saying. I don't know why he's talking in an English accent all of a sudden. <laughs> it, it beats your Czech accent. <laughs> I see. I think I understand what you're what you're getting at, sir. Uh, little boy, 
Let's see. I need a, I need a check name generator. Quick, somebody give me a check name. On, uh, Jan. On Jan. Jan. Okay, Jan. Uh, go Carl, run to the house. Carl. Jan Carl. Go run to the house at the end of the street and see if you can fetch this Pavel person. Yaramir Yager. <laughs> Yaramir. He's Jan Carl Yager. He has a full backstory now. Like, okay, and the kid's like, says something whiny in, in Czechoslovakian that you don't understand. Can we just give him money? It, it'll speed up a lot of things. The father, somebody. the father slaps him in the face. <laughs> that also works. That also works. That's the, the kid looks like he's about to cry, but he, he runs out the door and, and, and goes out and does it. He, he runs out the door and rats his father out to the Nazi. <laughs> I was considering that, um, but yeah, I mean, he, you know, they, they don't. The Nazis don't pay him any second mind. You know, you're looking out the window. You can see, you can see them, you know, pretty clearly from where they, from where you are. Yeah, the Nazis. Uh, he kind of makes a wide turn around where they're heading out. Um, they kind of look at him like, you know, they don't care. He's just a kid in the in the streets who's always there. Um, and you see him, you know, disappear up the street. Right. Well, it, it looks like the best thing we can do now is wait and drink. Right. So what is it that you know about the Three Kings? That holiday isn't for several months. Okay, Constantine uh, just is silent but looks at him in a meaningful way that says, I'm not going to say anything more because we both know what we're talking about and we're not going to discuss that in a fucking pub. Or you could just say, it's a fine holiday, from what I hear, but could be dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Some holidays are best not discussed. <laughs> You're saying this in, like, in English, in Ukrainian. <laughs> there's, a, there's a person in the back of the bar who's like, who's speaking Ukrainian? <laughs> um... <laughs> Your mother is speaking Ukrainian. <laughs> so, oh man, the way that came out. Um, oh dear, slick is rolling. Something things. happening. Yeah, I'm just I Yeah, so the the bartender walks uh, walks back, you know, behind the bar, then writes something down on a piece of paper, then walks into the back room. Oh. Does he take the piece of paper with him? Yeah, I mean, he just, you know, he's just Yes. It's probably, you know, it's okay. probably just inventory. Yeah, it's probably just inventory. Uh huh. Uh, Constantine uh, um, kind of follows him stealthily, <laughs> inconspicuously. Right. Yeah. So there's um, disguised as a shrub. Right. No wait. No wait. No wait. No wait. I take that back. Uh, Constantine turns to Roderick and whispers, "Roderick, you're quite sneaky, aren't you?" I'll try. Could you, could you, uh, inconspicuously uh, go into the back room, kind of see if you can see what the the barkeep is doing there? Check on the check. <laughs> All right. Okay. I guess I'll have to make a feet roll then. Yeah, make a stealth roll. Bearing in mind that um. Actually, I'm going to use this fate deck. So one of the things that, by the way, I uh, just wanted to point out here, one of the things that I like about the fate deck is that it, 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 I've been pulling up the cards for it. In addition to the um, to having, uh, you know, these, like, for example, I don't know if you can read this at all. In addition to having the, uh, the you know, this is a plus zero card, it's also got uh, like a little, little brief phrase as to like what, you know, might have happened to, uh, you know, to cause the plus zero or plus two or whatever. So I'm kind of like referring to that. Like, What's a plus zero? 
that's you know when in this case you rolled two negative twos and two two negatives and two pluses, so it adds up to zero. No, I rolled two pluses, one minus. Right. No, I'm just saying, like in this the case of this oh. card, this card is a zero. Oh, okay. okay, okay, I get it now. Right. So in addition to that, though, this one says, like for example, switched positions is the uh, is the thing there. Um, so you can, um, you know, so what kind of it, deck is this? It's a fate deck. deck. It's a fate deck, man. So Switch like I've position. so I've kind of been using this to like say, oh, why did this? How did you guys fail the roll, or you know, whatever? So, uh, just letting you know a little bit on the other side. In any case, uh, also this is a really cool deck. Um, yeah. So in any case, you uh, yeah, uh, there are several folks in the um, you know in the bar, the waitresses. Um, the one person who's kind of looking behind the bar though is now in back of it, so uh, you're able to take that opportunity to sneak back and. Uh, get into the office behind the place when nobody's looking. Um, so, uh, yeah, so the, he's got his back to you. He is on the phone uh, talking to somebody in whispered tones in Czech. Um, Watermelon. <laughs> I, I, Watermelon's I, I, yeah, I can't think of... Okay. I could, this is probably like there might be a knife or something um, I could use as a weapon. I'm gonna have to interrupt this conversation. Are you sure you want to do this? No. Yes, he is. No arguing for the peanut gallery. Not that Lazar would would start throwing notes of caution or anything, but I, I know I don't want to do it, but I have to do it. Like, there's no oh, okay. way I can let him oh, okay. continue on I with this conversation. I, so I would like to like quietly grab a knife and. Uh, hang up the phone on him and hold a knife to his throat or something to say that's not a good idea. All right, yeah, so go ahead. First of all, go ahead and make a stealth roll to try and... There's a... You know, the kitchen's back there. So go ahead and make a stealth roll to try to find the knife. Not at all. Um, it's just not going to work out for us. Yeah, that is not so great. Um, so this is guy... Um, yeah, he pricks his head up like something going on he he heard something and behind him he's still talking to the guy hmm. budweiser pilsner he's not saying that that's fine but he, those whisper tones are probably not indicating that well he's not he's he's i mean he's looking around furtively he hasn't really looked your way uh, the place isn't particularly well lit fortunately for you um He's still speaking, you know, on the other end. Locker, stout, ale. Michelob. He was saying that, but I don't think he is. <laughs> Steiner Bach. Yeah. If he was just saying that, then I'd let him be, but uh, he's not saying that. Right. Well, you have no idea what he's saying. I'm, I, I don't speak Czechoslovakian, so he's speaking. Yeah, but Czechoslovakian. I'm sure that an every you know male over the age of ten would know enough to, uh, Czechoslovakian to see if he was making filling in an order or whatever. And um, I'm pretty right. sure. I mean, that so he's not. there are two. There are two well, okay. So, so one go is he's talking to the resistance. The other, the other is that he's talking to some German agents. For some reason, he's talking to them in Czech. Right. Yeah. Go ahead and make an empathy roll, Morbus, uh, so you can. Get an idea of like, just you know. Yeah, that wasn't very good either. He's talking. Um, That's all I can tell. Okay. Yeah, little, I mean, like Lazar, you're you know you're already suspicious. So yeah, as far as you're concerned, I'm, he's talking about stuff. I um, I the fact Lazar make a also because no, I'm in the other room. Right. He's you're using a separate room. You're just back there. I mean, the oh, fact I that he went into the separate room is suspicious. So I'm have to, uh, He's on the telephone, so I'm just going to have to sneak up behind him and hang up on the phone if I can't get to the knife. Um, oh, well, I think cool. I think you've got the knife, but he's also, you know, he's also cautious. looking. Yeah, There's very cautious. Him. Right. Okay. Well, in, it, I have no choice. I'm going to have to come up to him and um, start threatening him with the knife and tell him to hang up. All right. That is a provoke uh, check then. 
<laughs> yes, that is that is what he's doing. And that, and by the way, you so you do have the um, here. You've got the boost of. Um, he couldn't have gone for Poland. Yeah. That's a boost, a so you can use that once. You don't have rogue, so you're rolling a plus zero. Got a knife. Okay. Regular. Oh, one. So, yeah, one. Um, so, right. Uh, let's see. And then on his side of things, taking Will against that, which is pretty good. So, uh, yeah, he got a two total. Um, so you miss the roll. You do have the boost there for got a knife that you can employ if you want to. Yeah, I'm going to have to. Yeah, I've got the knife, okay. so I'm going to threaten him with it. All right. So, um, all right. So, yes, yeah, so you, you you go up. You you get up behind him. You're like, don't move. And he's like, and he says something in Czech. Michelob, low and brow. <laughs> and then you uh, you we know, we know then, he speaks German. <laughs> you press the. Uh, well, he's talking to the guy on the phone. Do then, you speak uh, German, Roderick? I don't think so. I'm an American. No, that's this is going to be awesome. Then you press the you press the steel the cold steel up to his throat. And he's like, <laughs> and he stops talking and puts his hands up in the air. It's not entirely what Constantine had in mind, but. All right. And then hang up the phone. All right. So you grab, just take your other arm and, and hang no. the phone up. So, yeah, I mean, from your guys' standpoint, it's just taken a little bit longer than you figured it would. Lou, uh, Constantine right. at this point might be thinking, you know what? I just realized uh, he's not going to have any idea what that guy's actually saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, you know, Gonsatan was thinking, okay, he'll, he'll have a peek at what the guy is doing and come back and tell us what the guy is doing. So, um, yeah, I think this is, uh, yeah, it, it, it seems like a pretty good idea to just get up and, and walk to the back room. Or at least peek through the door. All right, you're just going to just calmly walk back there? You're trying to sneak back there? Or... Look no, he's just... the bathroom, maybe? Yeah, he's going to... Um, Constantine, he, 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 he doesn't look like he, he's, you know... He's not furt furtively looking around or anything because he's too much of a pro for that. He just walks kind of, you know, inconspicuously, just normally. He walks to the back room. Well, and, so uh, as, as you walk back there, one of the... Uh, the waitress out there is like, sir, that is that is employees only. Okay, and he says, I was just talking to your boss, and uh, um, he, he was going to make a call for me, and I need to uh, add something. Okay, that's a deceive. So. Okay, mister, but if you're lying to me, I can spot a liar from a mile away. No. That, that is loud. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's wow she is really kind of suspicious for a yeah a tavern wench well i she also saw the guy write something down on the piece of paper and then furtively walk back there it may not be the first time that's ever happened the guy meanwhile so meanwhile for you more of us the guy's back there you know you you told him to put down you know the the phone in in english um with your american accent so he's like american mickey mouse Okay. <laughs> so he can speak yeah, English. That way, that's what you shout when someone's got a knife at your face. Empire oh. State Building. Yeah. A so. okay, number one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's exactly what he's saying. Actually, America okay. number one. Any semblance of English, I'm going to ask him who he was taught, who he was calling, and why. So you're asking, okay, go and make a rapport roll. This is going to be have extra disadvantage to it because you're speaking another language. Three. Right. So he's like, um, God. I know talk. Me, good friend Mickey, America. Me, good friend Mickey Mouse. We know okay. speak Americano. <laughs> um all right so at that point then uh yeah louis walks in the door you see um roderick sitting there with a knife you know to the guy's throat the guy's talking about disneyland characters that he's aware of yeah i i sh pinocchio I, I i make sure to shut the door behind me as i walk in seems like a good idea um 
yeah, no, I, I survey the scene and I say, Roderick, please put the knife down. Okay, I'll lower the knife, but I'm going to leave it pointed at him just in case he just makes any sudden moves. He he slumps to the floor and starts crying. Oh, dear God. So I'm going to let Constantine know that he was trying to make a phone call and it sounded like uh, whispering tones to uh, try and turn us in or something. Okay, Constantine uh, uh, crouches down on, on uh, crouches down next to this uh, this barkeep and uh, taps him on the shoulder to get his attention, and he says, "Who were you calling?" And so, yeah, and during that during that approach, like uh, Roderick's like, "Yeah, I think he might have been calling the Nazis," and the dude's like, "Nazi, no, no, Nazi." <laughs> um, I love how how you're committing so, this session. <laughs> that's right that's what i'm doing 